All righty, so um, back at it again today. I brought the, the car in. I dropped the child off with the child minor. I brought the car in to uh, kind of heat up the workshop. It's fair, it was quite cold last night. Uh, we have snow on the ground and everything like that. So what I did yesterday evening after kind of giving up a little bit on the manifold, or at least not giving up on it, on the intake manifold for the state for the um, accelerator linkage, it wasn't that I gave up on it, it's more of a case of I wanted to uh, guess time, if you know what I mean, perspective on it. Um, so anyway, what I did then was I went off to some of the local agricultural suppliers and I managed to find metric wholesales. Yippee. <laughs> so basically, uh, we've got an M16 wholesale coming straight out here and then an M16 coming straight into a 19 and then all I did was I just put a M18 to M16 joiner there. And the reason why I did that was because that's a 10 mil hole. This would be a 10 mil hole. If I went to M18, I might not have got a 10. It might be in a 12 mil or something like that. And then what I did was I picked up um, a lens of Gates G GP60 inter uh, 10 mil ID. Let's see if we can get that to focus for you. Yeah, yeah, you're getting the idea anyway. Bloody thing won't focus. Anyway, um, so I got a lens of that. What my intention then to do will be this one obviously will come straight out from here and then I'm going to snake it around and straight up here because the, the the engine mount here with the manifold above there so I'm keeping it away from the exhaust uh, and turbo so the heat won't be an issue um, and bringing this straight down here I might be able to even put um, there's a couple of these sump uh, some uh, screws actually hold P clips for uh, for the likes of the transmission. Um, so I might be able to even put some kind of P clip on the ho hose to keep it down here. Um, what I liked about that idea of doing it is the coolant will be coming out here. It'll be going low here, so gravity will pull any air locks back up to these two respective points so there shouldn't be any kind of air bubbles or or, or kind of um issues there with trapped air inside of it so that's sort of what i liked about that uh, coming straight up from the bottom there's downsides because my exhaust will have to come out here and snake around this way so i'm hoping that's not the case this is a swivel joint so i can loosen that and that will that will go like that either way you know independent of the screw so you can actually hold it in place and tighten it up so that's that um i will get back onto this manifold at some point today um just waiting on a bit of inspiration or a bit of want <laughs>
So, um, finally kind of got this finished. Finished it yesterday and I just basically, because I had to make a little bracket. So where you probably left off, I was starting to make the bracket for holding the Bowden cable. Um, so to give you a kind of a, a better look at it. No, sorry, this is wet. Condensation dropping down from the roof. Um, but anyway, that fits in nicely here. Sorry, my little spacer fell out. And uh, so basically what we have is we have this stepped up off the manifold here. And this is just spaced down there. So that's your your two mounts. And as you can see, that sort of gives it an angle. But that's how it should be uh, from what I could tell from the... Um, from the top of the manifold and what it actually does is the one that's coming off the the Bowden cable is actually level if that makes sense and then what I did was I got a stainless steel bolt I just keep all these kind of random things this was a um, a slider for brakes on an Astra um, an Opel Astra but that basically I just put that through the, through the on the bench the pillar drill and drill down a seven mil hole so I've got a little bit of play kind of there. Oop. And that basically just acts as a spacer then so that the the injector cover doesn't fully pull down, if you know what I mean. And um, has something to give a bit of resistance. And then what I did was I let's just pop it there. Now that will move around, you normally put that I'm, what I've been doing is I've been putting the bo the bowden cable bracket on and putting it straight through and then screwing it in. But anyway, so I did a little cut just here and then this big cut here. And that's your hole for the mount. And then I had to make a square hole then for holding the bracket for the Bowden cable. So then I had to elongate the, there's a little tab on the Bowden cable that comes down. And it would have been about here on the original. So what I did was I just got a bit of three mil steel and I made a longer, a longer piece. And as you can see, that just sits perfectly down there. And what that does, if I can show you, you might just be able to see that. Hold on. If you can see underneath that ball to the right, dead center of the screen here, you got this little black tab back there. That is actually the Bowden cable bracket. So if I pull it out there, you can see me putting it in. Perfect. So that just sits into a tab to locate it. And then basically you put your bolt through and then that can't move left or right. It has to stay rigid, which is what you're looking for. And then that will just sit onto, onto there. And we get our Bowden cable pulled. So let me just sit back here and let's have a look. So I think that's a pretty neat um, solution to it. It, I'm going to I'm going to go out there as far as to look say that that would be the same a design as Mercedes would have done if they were making um, making a cable driven one basically. So it's it's not a million miles away from what the NA. It is all, using all the same NA um, OM606 brackets. It's not a million miles away from from that. What they actually did, what, what they would have done is the same thing they have on their, their NA one, which is to have a little dip here, divot. But apart from that, I think it looks pretty sweet. I'm, I'm very happy with it. Anyway, it took an awful lot of time. It took me um, basically yesterday. It took me yesterday to do it. Um, but yeah, I'm happy. Um, thanks for watching, guys. The next thing is I need to... The next... The next thing is I need to um, just finish tightening up all these things, tighten up the alternator, um, and then I'm going to put it in to the engine bay. The engine bay is looking great. I'm really happy with that. I went over here, as you can see, in little areas. But uh, hey-ho. Yeah, still. All right, guys. The other thing that I might do is I've been looking into is I might be getting going for the diesel pump UK brackets for the uh, manif or for the in intercooler because I, I, I sort of 
I'd be kicking myself if I, I, I think I'd be kicking myself if I start cutting into the bodywork just to fit the intercoolers when you can just get a bracket that goes, that you remove those and you, you know what I mean, you, you, you can um, weld it into place. So I might do that and then that might give me the facility to keep my air cut at the same time. I'm looking into it at the moment. Um, if that's the case, I'll probably just sell the, uh, the, the 300 ZX um, intercoolers that I have there. Where are they gone? That's them there. So I might just sell, sell them if in the, the case that I go for the other and then just buy a standard off-the-shelf intercooler that fits into that. Uh, now, the only thing is it's quite costly to do the diesel pump UK ones, but then maybe it'll just save me an awful lot of headache in the long run. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.